and welcome, welcome to another episode of A Well's Perspective on the Elsbar chapter, which is coming out in like six to eight weeks. <clears throat> we are going to get the Elsbar area. And yeah, there's a whole heap of changes which are coming in. So we will look at them and see if and how they will accept our well setup. So, by the way, they added a new necromancer class. There's a few interesting skills here which you can see. Like, for example, you, the, to summon a frost atrona for like 150 ultimate, smashes the ground three times. The only thing what worries me here is the major vulnerability, and it stuns with the mon morph, so that's probably stamina will take this, and magdens will take, and mag necros will take this. Disease damage. So, yeah, this is gonna hit like a truck. It's going to be very interesting. Here they can uh, summon a like skull to throw at you. Burning skull. It turns into a ability. There's poison damage. So let's see. Necromancer counts towards. Let's see. Passes. Where are the passives in this one? Oh, here we are. Oh, okay. So you can cast like blast bombs for free if. Uh, if you call if, if you damage an enemy with the necromancer ability. Um, this is like fourteen percent I think for the with the four passives. So anyway. Here you can see flame skull which can cast an enemy blast bones. You summon a flaming skeleton. It's like the kamikaze ones you can see in what's it called? Frost something. Frost vault. No frost vault, what's it called? Dire frost, yeah. The in the, on the one of the bosses, he summons like kamikaze skeletons, something like this. Does disease damage defi defile? It's gonna kind of be curious to see if it's major or minor defile. If it's major defile, it's gonna be strong, very very strong. Let's see. This one is is summon desecrating the ground. Okay, I guess it's like a, this is like an AOE healing over time. Hmm, weird. Boneyard. So let's see if you do the Boneyard, there's frost damage, and then the Grave Throbber Synergy does damage to enemies. You can summon a Skeletal Mage or an Archer. Again, nice, it's like a damage over time just with the pets. Here, this is like an execute, the mystic siphon and the detonating siphon. So they have a spammable, a burst, burst if the ability, and they execute. Let's see, stamp sorc, spammable, nope. Damage, uh, burst skill, nope. Execute, nope. Fantastic. I love how people, are, how, how they do this to us. Let's see. This is the passes. If an enemy dies, you can, you can cast an ability for free. Critical strike chance against low health enemies. Or is increased. So yeah, this skill line is very powerful, very nice skills for a for stamp class and mag class. Shan Solid. This one is you gain a lot of health and you get your light attacks restore health. This is like a tank ultimate, 300 ultimate. Only lasts 20 seconds though. It's gonna be like a nice thing, but the ultimate is so expensive, I don't think many people will use it. Um, Ewe Bash Attack. What? Okay. Heal for as many. Okay, it's like a some kind of weird heal. Okay, this is like um a like a what's it called the file. This is the arm buff. Also, sounds interesting. Oh, they have like a chain and an armor buff in one? Holy cow, that sounds pretty powerful. This is like Repentance from Stamplar, so yeah, I hope you know that, how that works. Minor protection to you and your allies. Oh yeah, this is like the NPC skill, I know this is annoying as well. But I think you can destroy the FEL bones, so it shouldn't be that bad in PvP. Ghostly. This is like the roots. 
It's like um, Elden Root 1, I think she summoned this. Death Cleaning. Oh. Oh wow. I wonder how much it is. It sounds pretty nice in PvP. Reduces the damage from dots. This will be this this class will be a nice counter to uh, mag DKs or DKs in general. Healing received, max health. I think like 1.8k. So yeah, sounds pretty nice. Living death. I think this is supposed to be the healing tree, if I'm not if I'm mistaken. Okay, reanimation. Oh wow, you can resurrect three allies. Oof. Summon Blast Bones. It's like a healing ability. Major Defile to yourself. You get resistances while healing people? Oh, Jesus. Restoring which maximum is higher. <laughs> Again, this is like all bound to corpses, so... Unless you have a corpse nearby, you can't use most of these abilities, that's a big downside. So I think you can actually counter a Necromancer pretty nice in PvP at least. In PvE you won't notice it anyway, but in PvP, unless you have like people dying left, right and center, Necromancer won't be that strong, I think. Necromancer will be like a group class to play. Good in a group shit solo, just like the warden. I just wish they would give a stamp, a stamp sort the same thing what they have. I mean, they have that like, repentance, defile, chains, and an armor buff, spammable burst, burst skill, spam execute. They have it all, literally. I mean, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I would love personally love to have a spammable as a stamp sort and an execute. Maybe even a burst ability, but maybe we should be too demonic, should we? Let's see. Restore magic and stamina. Hang on, let me just check this one. Hang on. This can't be right. Conjure ghostly spirit to use, stays by side, heals the low cellar. Oh, this is like a healing. Oh, like a heart. It's like the clan. It's like the winged things that Sorks have, just that it automatically heals. Healing energy, max health, passive. I think they confused this one. Because, look, we have the both same things here. This can't be right. So yeah, take this with a big pinch of salt, but you get the picture. Necromancer has it all. <laughs> They literally have it all, and it's going to be ex excellent for groups. Kind of, um, I'll be curious if necromancer can, necromancers can steal each other's corpses, which will be an issue in PvP, just like the Repentance was. So, yeah, we, we will see that. I don't quite know how that's supposed to work, but they have it all. And especially that Frozen Flesh Atonach passive um, ultimate which they have, that sounds scary, to be honest. Minor vulnerability, hits like a truck, Disease damage, so you can proc the file on you. Oh my god. They have to carefully balance that one out. We're gonna get 40 new item sets. New dies. Additions. We have a guild find system, that sounds pretty nice. Oh, that was about time. And we're also getting some weapon artifacts in PvP, which will be the legendary weapon Volen Drone. Which you can see here, it's like a 2H mall, I think. You'll get a whole, you'll get like a complete new skill bar, just like Werewolf, while using it. So, yeah, it's gonna be pretty interesting. The Necromancer. I mean, I can't wait till they have the Necromancer in the ESO build editor, which I'm using, so that I can see how high the tooltips are gonna be. Because if it's gonna be as only as half as bad as I think the Necromancer is gonna be, it's gonna be seriously overpowered. On the on the other side, most of the skills depend on corpses. So in one v ones, I don't think it'll be that bad. It'll just be annoying in a, as AF in groups. Because imagine you're like killing an enemy enemy group. There are two necromancers there, and boom, six people instantly rezzed. Hallelujah. They have to have give like a cooldown or something on that res because otherwise it's going to be 
seriously, seriously, seriously broken. And I'm gonna call it that way. It's gonna be seriously broken. <coughs> Six stealth, sky shard content, challenging world bosses. Um, nothing special here. Two public dungeons, thirty hours of quest content, necromancer. So yeah, if you use a necromancing ability inside a city, the guards will arrest you. <laughs> and you trial, okay, don't really care about that. You know, item sets, again, okay, this is like necro, uh, necropotence. A bit weaker, but you don't have to have a pet for it, so yeah, yeah, I guess. Nightblade set, Undertaker, this sounds interesting, for at least for PvE, for, for tank walls or something, but there's six on the health, which you get back every second. Uh, I mean, if only procs of light attacks, that means you can't AV, spread it with AVs to multiple targets. So it sounds nice, but I don't really think it's going to be that good. Would be interesting for a well from PvP, though. Senshirat, Healing Seed. Oh, okay. That's more like it. Because in PvP, almost everything, almost everyone runs a dot build nowadays. So if you use this set, you can like get like permanently 6% healing received, extra and extra physical and spell resistance. It's a nice counter set to heal or to, um, to what's it called, dart builds. But uh, I probably still won't use it because, I mean, heavy armor doesn't need more tankiness. And if I'm running heavy armor, I want damage. So I'm gonna run a damage set like, I don't know, Night Mothers, Sunning, stuff like that. While Stereo's Tutage. Okay, this is gonna be for res bots. Again, opinions are divided on that one. This set sounds also pretty good if it procs of healing over time abilities. If you heal yourself, it should. Pro if, it, if this procs of hearts, this is going to be a very nice one. The cooldown isn't so that long, it's like six second cooldown, and you get like a 2k heal. It's like 8k here health, so 7 to 8k health every 10 seconds. So, yeah, nice. Sounds pr usable somewhat. Trial sets again, it's a lot like, like synergy based stuff. Costumes and hats, okay. Nothing big here. Oh, New Green Venus. Minor heroism on potions? Now that sounds interesting. <laughs> if you don't have minor heroism, I'm using heroic slash, so I already got it. There's a guild searching tool. And you can also block people from uh, blacklist people from your from your guild. There's a new weapon Volundrum that I mentioned, which gives you like emp like buffs. They wanted to make this as a counter to the emperor buff that you get in PvP, so that there's at least one guy in Turtle who can actually take you on. So it's going to be a lot easier to posing imps with this weapon in. They are going to close down the Vidak campaigns, Shores, Soul Thistle, and Kaim, and they are um, they are putting in these six new campaigns. I'm not even going to even try to pronounce them. I'm just going to call this Carl. So this will probably be the main campaign next patch. They're also going to lock the 30-day campaigns down. Imperial City is going to be its own campaign. Um, they updated a few old sets, which you can see here. Rolled with at hand. Buffed. Also buffed for quite heavily. This is like 500 magic recovery right there. If the, if this procs on cooldown. The problem is with these sustain sets that it's literally pure sustain. It has zero damage to it in any, in any fashion. So not a big fan of this. Essence Thief is... You draw essence from the collecting essence heals you. Last five seconds. You still have to taste behind them and pick them up, you know? That's that's what makes the, the Essence Thief shit. Trappings of Invigoration. Still gonna stay terrible because it's a pure sustain set and, you have, and you'll have zero damage if you use it. That's the downside because Bone Part is like damage and sustain at the same time. And this is this pure sustain. It's gonna be sustain is a bit better than versus Bone Pirate. But again, you lack so much max stamina, you'll lose a ton of damage right there. Leeching Plate was also buffed, but since it, ever since they nerfed the crittings of proc sets, healing sets like that really don't take off in PvP anymore. Before they used to be quite strong actually, but now that they can't crit they're essentially useless. 
Affliction minor the father. It's still gonna be like a fizzal is a bit, I think. Esau logs. This doesn't sound too interesting to be honest. Yeah, torn cloth, St. Lawrence. These are PvE changes. Sickening C. Okay, after getting a resurrection by an enemy play by uh, another player, will be in, in ghost form for like three seconds. This is like in PVE, you know. I think they did it because of the necromancer re re resing alt, and also to prevent people from getting instantly killed as soon as they get back up. Because I know that was one of the things what kept happening in PVP. Not just me, because I build my character is usually more sturdy than that. That they can even take one or two hits even on at half health. But like squishy characters should profit from this. Um, pets only. Ah, I was already wondering why my pets were surviving so well <laughs> on my pack leader. But I'm thinking about switching to Berserker anyway, since the bleeds are getting nerfed on the pack leader. Okay, cast time abilities have their global cooldown removed. That means stuff like Uppercut, Sniper are going to be easier to cast in quick succession. Don't fret though, because Snipe took a big hit damage-wise. They nerfed it by 25%, but there's more to that later. More fluid transaction. I Free and terror. This should make it a lot easier for a werewolf to land your burst combo on players, because I know that when you fear away people try to land a heavy attack Hall of Agony combo on them, that was <laughs> close to impossible sometimes, because they're running away from you like, like a headless chicken, essentially. And it, that, that really made it really hard sometimes for people. It worked if you block cancel the fear, it stopped it sometimes. It made that they just stood there and didn't run away. But that was like a bit luck based. So yeah, this is very, very nice. Reliability of charge and teleport abilities. Okay, all of them. Uh, oof. Immobilization cooldown. Thank you, finally. Because like these snare tanks. They really made PV, uh, PvP less enjoyable, in my opinion, because, man... Because just, uh, just, you know, they can just literally root spam you, and they can literally lock you, unless you get out of there, they can literally lock you down in one place, which is stupid. So this may should make PvP as well a lot easier, since we don't have um, snare immunity abilities. Without having to use sets like Bark Skin, Ranger's Gate, and stuff. <clears throat> Weapon swapping. Okay, DK, DK's got a hefty buff. Because pretty much all of their dots got the instant damage component buffed. And they added, to, to compensate for that, they added a delay between the instant damage component of like, for example, Fiery Breath and um, and the dot component. So that's like instant damage, one second, and then the dots start. That's to, uh, They did that to prevent people from recars like spamming dots abilities essentially and using them as spammables and stuff, like rendering slashes and stamp stuff, for example, which is stupid because <laughs> that pretty much locks down stamp stock to Sworn Ward. Because we don't, literally don't have any other spammable, which is uh, terrible. I was actually kind of hoping for them to add like a spammable to Sam, so as I said, mentioned previously, but uh, damn. Oh well. They added this one, so you get like 300 extra spell damage every time you activate it. Oh, okay. Mag decays are gonna hit sword next patch. But they reduce the burstiness of DK a bit with this. More heals, more dot damage, more 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 damage, more damage, more more heals. But they took away their wings. <laughs> that just made them. They it'll make DKs easier to kill, but they'll also hit a, li a lot harder. More heals, more heals, longer duration, longer duration. So yeah, DK's got a ni nice buff. Nightblade's got 
a nerf. They took away the major default from Incap. Soul Harvest kept it though. Grim Focus lost his minor berserk. As to compensate for that, they give them the teleport strike. But and it'll somehow it'll heal you when you when you fire it next to the enemy target. But they took away the fracture of surprise attacks, so Nightblade should hit a lot a lot. Uh, Nightblade damage should be uh, tuned down a bit in in future. Aspect of Terror. Oh wow, they actually double the amount of targets, mass hysteria effects. But it no longer snares them, so yeah. Dark Cloak, they spread out there because the Dark Cloak, it took like, it was like 30, it was like for over three seconds. So the heal was pretty powerful. And if you had like, if you had like a standard in heavy armor, the heals of, if they, if they use like Dark Cloak and cooldown, man, they were so hard to kill. Also mag blades. So this should tune down the heal of Dark Cloak and Mag Blades and stuff. So yeah, again, nerf to Mag Blades if you use this. Summon Shade damage was increased. I guess Mag Blades would like to hear this. And then, but then again, Surprise Attack damage nerf. I guess more Night Blades will start slotting the Pleasing Mark in future to keep the Fracture. <laughs> they buffed the Drain Power ability by a bit. Well, a lot, it's like 25%. I can I can see this being viable in spin to win groups to be honest, because the tooltip is already pretty powerful on the drain power, power extraction and buffing it again by twenty percent, the damage should be pretty potent. Soul shred again, they increase the radius. Soul tether. I just wish they would give like a. Oh, thank God they don't have a stamina for this. A one second delay. Okay, max orcs cost reduction. Bug fix, streamlining. Well, if this only procs if you literally stand in it for four seconds, which no person with half a brain will do, so this shouldn't be a problem. Negate magnet, bug fixes. Oh, I see that they tune down the snipe spam um, synergize, syner uh, synergies cheese that they were doing at the moment. So, nerf to pet sorks a bit damage wise. So, yeah, no problem. Bolt escape streak. Ooh, buff for stamps, uh, stamp sorts, somewhat. So, yeah, Max Orc got a, a small buff. DK's got a actually huge buff. Right there, Lightning Splash. Meets his Wrath. Again, like, streamlining a bit. There's nothing major here. With at least nothing that I can see. Templar. Damage nerf from the gap closer, piercing javelin, duration of the stun damage buff for Stampler here. They re in they reduced the channel time, but kept the damage, I think. Damage buff to the Stampler ultimate. Damage buff, damage buff, damage buff. Sun shield still crap. Eclipse won't proc of spiked armor. <laughs> it shouldn't have been that way in the first place, sorry. Um Of the light, dark flare got its channel time reduced. The damage got reduced by a lot. I know that it, it hit like a truck. If it hit you, it hit it hurt badly. Sunfire also adjusted to the new dot rule set. Cleansing ritual. Okay, this buff for Stampler. So Stampler got a quite a nice buff there. Magplar didn't change really. Warden, okay, you can block the beetles now, that's quite nice. Nerf the Warden. Um, increase, they increased the Warden's tankiness now. And they decreased the snare from that Frost Ultimate, Sleet Storm. Cleave was made into like a somewhat of a spammable. So... Yay, I guess. Apricot was also <clears throat> made easier to use as a spammable. It's still going to be terrible because it's easy to dodge. Mm, short blade plug bug fix. Flurry got a damage buff as well, but it's still <laughs> it's, a it looks retarded. 
And B, the damage is still ridiculously low since it's counted as a dot. Twin slashes also changed to the new dodge rule set. Spin to win, lost to execute. They gave it to whirling blades. But and then again, the radius is like I think three meters less than the than than steel tornadoes. So you have the choice between a larger AOE and having an execute component, because even with the damage buff, <laughs> it's still going to be non-relevant if you ask me. The tooltip is uh, I think five to six k at best. If you increase it, that's like seven k tooltip against the most players that won't do more than 2 or 3k damage, so... Yeah. That Steel Tornado group took a hit there. Bombard Snipe, their most favorite ability. They reduced the damage and uh, made increased the travel time, so the Snipe desyncs should be a lot less this patch. That's actually one thing I'm looking forward to. It doesn't happen often, but if it happens to you, there's literally nothing you can do against it. It's just like, lights out, and you have like eight snipes in your death recap. They also took away the major defile from lethal arrow. That's pretty good, because it is. It was just so easy to defile people from range. They also um, decreased the befall CP. I think they capped it to thirty five percent, which is also going to be very nice for us as well. Because, man, even though the defiles builds are not as bad as they were before, but it's still irritating. So, less snares, less defiles. I'm happy. Panica, the rest all lost its major protection. Okay, that's good. Doesn't make Sorks a lot easier to kill. Because they were relying on this for defense. They nerfed the blades of the pack leader morph by 15%. But, the, the, but they increased the damage by 25% on the Berserker morph. So the Berserker morph will be very, very nice in PvP. Probably going to switch over to it again. And also decrease the duration, so it'd be a lot harder to increase to keep your pressure up on people as a werewolf, at, at least with your bleeds. You have to really keep on them, and you can get the dots easier off off or off of you if you're like um, fighting a werewolf. So this is like a small nerf to werewolves, but nothing really that drastic. And they did buff infectious claws, so it'll be a lot easier fighting roly poly builds because it's undodgeable. Dawnbreaker, they delayed the damage delay between the instant damage component and the dot by two seconds. Okay, that's... Hmm. They won't feel it anyway, because either you kill an enemy with their, with their first burst, or you don't kill them at all. The dot is this... Beast trap, turn on dead, accelerate, elemental weapon. Mind wounds. Oh, okay. No longer cost resources. I wonder if you can use this in werewolf form. You know, just cast it in this like light attack in werewolf form. Toggle it on. I wonder how that works. I have to try that. Check that. Try that out. Actually, I think it somehow locks you because it costs magic or something. But if it doesn't cost resources and it works in werewolf form, you can just cast this and go into werewolf form. Have some pretty constant heals. Imagine you can if this works in well for me, can you even have like a, a werewolf healing build with this with this skill? Sounds pretty funny. <laughs> Cow chops. Okay, got a buff there. Guard got fixed finally. Ah, okay, Befal got capped to 35%. That'll tune down to the those Befal in PvP a lot. They want to change, I think they want to change Oblivion damage into something which affects high health targets more than low health targets. So I think maybe they'll do it like damage scales of the max health of the enemy or something like that. Dubious also lost a bit of stats right there, but in a 12%, that should be like four, 500 or so. Effectively, with with uh, overall loss of resources, 
Artem buff would also last it. This will actually um, motivate people more to use other food, like the spring, inf um, spring infusion thingamajig. I think there's a drink, yeah, something like that. It's like tri-food just for drinks. People will switch over to that in fu more in future. These are all bug fixes. Even though, hang on. Oof. Okay, the Earth Golem heals one person, but negates all negative effects in the area. That's going to be nice to counter, like, Siege, for example. Siege feels you run in, clean, clean up all the Siege AVs with one of the one Earth Core. But on the other hand, you, can, you can't keep or like a group alive, which gets ulti dumped with that set anymore, so... I guess farming groups should like this. Even though being every, everything being negated, it means if you put a negate on people and dump them, the negate will get negated by the earth core. So I can see how this will, it's, it's not gonna be crap in PvP anymore. It's actually gonna be extremely potent. It's like kind of like a vacuum cleaner set. So yeah, this is interesting. Golf of Soul, okay. Shield breaker does okay. Can't cheese uh, sorks away anymore. Sorks will like this, I think. Walken score has now a ring around it. Around it. Eh, finally, because every time like like the tower is in PvP got changed. You know when the keep upgrades and the the whole keep changes. Um, every time that happened, like he got kicked into a loading screen. I mean, nine out of ten deaths in PvP are caused by literally loading screens at the moment. Where you're like, keep flags, boom, loading screen, GG. You can might as well log in and log out. That's what they usually do. Instead of waiting like five minutes and waking up dead, you might as well get spawned to the main 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 door keep while you're there. Siege. Oh my god. 30% siege increase. Are these guys, are these, are these, is that even serious? Siege damage increased by 30%. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, and these are the bug fixes, I think. Okay, overall changes are pretty nice. They changed the dot. Dot builds got changed a lot. I don't think that dot builds will take a big hit damage-wise because they increased the overall damage, but that means dot builds will have a lot harder time bursting people. So I guess that's a good thing. Good thing. <coughs> so let's see. Yeah, I actually like the changes. It should be pretty solid. I'm ho I'm still hoping that they'll add a stamp sort spammable there sometime, but uh, I'm not keeping my hopes up honestly. So yeah, until that happens, especially since they nerfed rendering as a spammable, it'll make pretty much sworn board mandatory for stamp sorks to have heroic slash or ransack. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Werewolves, not much of a change. Pack leader got nerfed a bit. Berserker got buffed, damn on the dot components, so. Oh well. Workable, workable changes. H hopefully, uh, as soon as they add the Necromancer under the build editor that I'm using, um, I will just like set up a Necromancer wealth and see how high the tooltips for the all the skills are, because I'm curious about that. Anyway, until then, I see you guys later and peace out.